Hey folks, um, this is a video on 312 with just a little bit of help for it. Um, you want to make sure, you know, not only do you spin up 312, um, but you also have your notebook because you're going to be filling stuff out and your Linux command list because we're going to add some stuff to that. So just throughout the whole thing, whenever you see a new Linux command, make sure you add it to that list. Um, flags also come into play too in this one. Okay, so um, I'm probably not going to keep going back here. You can do that one. Uh, but I just wanted to pick out a couple things, make sure I explained them. Um, one cool thing about Linux that Windows is not as easy in is Linux is pretty nice in the ability to control access. If you've ever tried to open something up and it said uh, you need to be an administrator or something, well, someone has set those um, user settings to make sure that only the people who should can get into the files. Um, so access control is what is the fancy name for that. And basically, whenever you're doing cybersecurity, you want to make sure that the only people who get to any of your files or directories are just the ones who need to. And if they don't really need to, don't give them permission to. Um, so there's three groups on every file that you have to address. The owner is the person who makes the file and owns it. The group is a special group that you can set permissions to. Like a lot of times they're, you know, if we were dealing with the school system, there's the uh, tech administrators would be the owners. And then the group, we could have teachers get a certain set of permissions, and then others, everyone else. So there's three things you can do with any um, file you can or directory. You can read, write, or execute. Um, execute is to go into a directory. If it's a file, it'll run it. Um, so basically, it looks like this. The first three letters are about the owner, the next three group, the next three others. Um, and then there's usually a letter in front. If you see a D, it's a directory. If you just see a dash, it's, it's a file. So um, if you spin up, we're going to open up alpha. Um, again, so we go to connections and then alpha. And we open up our Linux terminal. This is what it looks like. Get that out of there. So here's our Linux terminal. We're on a Linux computer now. Okay, and um, remember you can do things like ls and look around. You can do pwd and look what my working directory is and stuff like that. All those cd commands that we know from before. This one says if you want to go into the executables, I could type it all out, but it does fill in with tab. It's kind of like a uh, autocorrect sort of. So if I do change directory to exe and then I hit tab, it figures it out. Um, so if you don't feel like typing the rest. Um, so we're going to do a special kind of a list because I could just ls um, and look around, but there's a special thing we can do and it's by attaching a flag on. This is one of many flags you're going to use in the future. Because um, if I just do normal ls, I see all these things, right? Message, sh, all that, trust me, txt. But you can actually find the long listing for a file and um, by doing list and then minus L, that's not a one, and then I do message.txt. You can do a bunch of them too. Um, so on here, if I go back and I do ls minus L and then I'm going to type in message.sh, um, what it does is it shows you the permissions that go with this file. Like there's a minus there, so I know it's not a directory, it's a file. And this is for the owner, read, write, execute. For the group, read, blank, execute. For others, nothing, 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 which means they can't even read it, they can't write it, they can't execute it. Um, so you could do that with other ones, and then it shows you, if you type this in, you could do multiple at a time. You can look at the message text and the welcome text at the same time, right? What is the welcome? Read, write. It's not an executable file. It's just a readable file. 
and everybody can read it. So it's a cool thing about Linux. You can really control uh, who does it. So in here, you're going to do this in your notebook. This is your first thing in the notebook, number four. I said just type it in here and then take a screenshot and paste it. So like the owner can read, write, execute on here. If you look up to welcome, the owner can read and write. Okay, and then fill the rest of it out, take a little snip, put it in your thing. Um, and you can see the long listing actually tells you more things too. It says like how many links, who, create, who owns it, what group it's in, uh, how big the file is. That's sometimes useful to find suspicious things. And when it was last modified. Um, so yeah. Um, right, so if we execute it, or if we try to read it. Remember, you could use more, or you could use less, right? If I did more message dot sh, um, there's also cat message dot sh, or I could use less. And basically, it's not really readable. So it's an executable. executable. It just tells you where it is. So instead of doing that, if you actually want to make some if you want to actually execute something, you just type in the file you want to execute and hit enter. Um, and it ran this thing. So instead of being just a text file, it was a it was an executable file that could run. It still just says welcome, but um, it ran code to do that. All right, so there's that kind of stuff. Um, so we want to add the minus L flag. So here's what I would suggest. In here, we already have LS. But I, I also want to remember there's a minus L flag. Um, and down here, I'm going to put a description of minus L um, and what it does. Uh, minus L, the minus L flag uh, l creates or shows, displays the long listing of a file or directory which shows um, the permissions and um, owner, date modified, etc. Okay, so the minus L is pretty cool because it shows you more. Here's a thought. I wonder, what if I just typed in, um, instead, you know how LS looks around? What if I did ls minus l without a specific file. Yeah, it shows you all. So instead of just normal looking around, I'm looking around with minus l so I can see all these. Look at this. This is a pretty big file right here, right? It's an executable. Um, and you can see the green color probably tells you, right? Blue is a directory. Um, white is a, is a text file. And now we know green is an executable file. So you can see all sorts of stuff with that. Um, here's something weird. Remember in Windows, if you wanted to change a file type, you could just like, remember we had suspicious files and we just wanted to read them? We would, uh, we would just change it to a .txt and then, you're not, and then you're safe. Well, you can't do that in Linux. Linux doesn't let you just change the file type. Um, if you want to see what type of file it is, you just type file. And it shows you what type of file it is. It's ASCII 2 text. Okay. Um, I could do the next one too. You could do file um, and it tells you this is an ELF 64 bit executable file, blah, blah, blah. So that's how you can tell if they didn't put a file extension on there, which they don't have to look quote of the day, no file extension on there. You can type file quote, of the day and see what type it is. Okay, so they don't have to put file extensions on there, but the downside is you can't just change them if you want to. Um, you can even move this file and change it, make it look like it's a doc file, but it won't be. Um, remember MV um, and then message.sh to message. Doc. OK, 
Okay. Now I just, what I just did was I moved it to a dock. I just changed its name, right? So you'd think it's a dock now, but and that was something from last lesson that you're supposed to finish up. See, it's still ASCII two text. It's not a Word doc, even though it looks like it. So don't be fooled. Basically, what this tells you is that at the back doesn't necessarily mean it's the type it is. You have to type in file to figure it out. Okay, and then we have a wildcard too, which is kind of cool. We've used it before in searches in Windows. Um, so now you can do it in here too. You can say, I want file asterisk. Um, and it finds all the different file types. There's an ASCII file, there's a ELF file, there's a GNU, you know, so it basically will tell you all the different file types. Okay, moving on, um, and you should go through here. These are actually pretty good. Try to tell what they're doing first, and there's some suspicious materials there. But here's an awesome flag that I always use. It's the minus A flag. Um, remember in, in Windows you had to um, put in, like you had to click a checkbox to find hidden files? Well here in Linux all you have to do is do a minus A to find hidden files. Um, so we're going to do this. We're going to go back to our home directory with just a regular CD, remember? Um, and I can just look around with list, look at all these things. Okay, now here's a sneaky thing. There are some hidden files in here. Um, and we find them by, instead of just list, we can do list with a minus A. So I'm going to go ls minus A. And look, there's a bunch of sneaky things here. There's bash logout, bash, there's this welcome. Look at all this stuff. There's some sneaky hidden files. Um, they're called dot files if they're hidden and the average user can't find it. What's kind of cool is you can combine flags. So add that minus A flag um, to here, right? I got minus L, I should have minus A, and then go tell what minus A does. It shows hidden files. Um, so anyway, um, you can do the long list too. So you can combine long and hidden. And then this wants all the hidden files in, or all the list in downloads. Okay, so ls minus la. That would be here. But if I change directory to downloads, and I look around, I see puppy, but here I can see there's a ghost file, a sneaky one. So if I want to know more about it, I don't just have to list it. I can do minus L, A, and put the L for long and A for hidden. And you can see what's, what this ghost file is. It's, it's only 12 bytes, and so that's tiny, but it, it's an executable file. So anyway, just wanted to show you a couple of those things. There's also a way to encrypt. If you remember in Windows, we could check a box to encrypt a file. Here, um, you can encrypt it with this GNU um, privacy guard, and you basically have to use the GPG command. Add this to your, um, to your list here. GPG is a new command, right? We also have move. I didn't add that there yet. Um, so GPG is a way to um, is a way to encrypt files to kind of protect them more. And the minus C is uh, to create. So if you want to create an encrypted file, you put the GPG there, you do a minus C, and then you can name the file whatever you want. <clears throat> it's not going to be a Word doc. It's not going to be anything except it, a um, an encrypted GPG file. So anyway. You can type file to look at that. So the rest, just go through here carefully and um, yeah, hope this stuff makes sense. Email me if you need help. Talk to you later.